All right, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Fanon, and in this video, we're going to talk about Errol Spence Jr. issuing a nice little warning to Jerron Ennis when asked if he would fight Jerron Ennis and Virgil Ortiz or whether or not he would be trying to duck out of the fight. Let's talk about that in this video. All right, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Fanon. We're going to talk about the welterweight division. There was a press conference today where Errol Spence Jr. kicked off the uh, campaign or what do you call the promotion for his up and coming fight with your Danis Ugas for the WBA, the WBC and the IBF uh, welterweight championship. And he was asked a question of, that is coming up a lot in boxing. He said he's asked, will you fight Jerron Ennis out of Philadelphia? And he, because he is now supposed to be fighting Custio Clayton, I do believe it's in early April that he's fighting Custio Clayton to become the mandatory for the IBF shot. And also they talked about the fact that Virgil Ortiz was in the top three or the top four in every sanctioning body. And, you know, would he fight these young guys or would he be looking to skip past these kids to skip past these young guys? And I absolutely positively loved his response um, because it's refreshing, especially after listening to Canelo Alvarez give his explanation of why he will not fight Jamal Charlo or David Benavidez. And <laughs> I'm telling you, man, it's I'm very, very happy that Errol Spence Jr. is the type of dude that he is. That is a throwback fighter. That is, a, that is the type of attitude that I believe fighters should have. And while Canelo Alvarez, on the other hand, when he was asked about uh, David Benavidez and asked about Jamal Charlo, his answer to the question was, what do they have to offer to me? You know, like, what do I get out of that fighting? I mean, if you have to hint before I I'm sorry, I digress a little bit. Before I get into the Errol Spence aspect of it, I can't resist it because I'm not going to do a video about it. Uh, what you have in it is to answer all is to have people stop asking you the question. So since you keep getting the question all the time, maybe there's a lot of people out there that want to see the fight. But anyway, Errol Spence Jr. answered it the right way, in my opinion. And he said, look, man, I'm not ducking and dodging nobody. Now, he said he thinks that uh Jerron Ennis he's like man he's got skills he's got talent he's got his father around him to keep his head on to keep his head on straight it looks like a terrific fighter for him and then when the time come and the, when the time happens he's not going to duck him now obviously what he has is he has a, a fight that he's got right now and then he's got that undisputed fight with Terrence Crawford which clearly he is looking to do um and wanting to get done but he said one thing that he's and he said the same thing about Virgil Ortiz, a little less emphatic about Virgil Ortiz than he was about Jerron Ennis. But then when he walks away, man, he kind of comes up with this little smirk and says, um, yeah, but, you know, yeah, I won't duck him. But let's just, you know, hope it's not too early for them. Right. <laughs> hope it's not too early for him, which is pretty much telling him, all right, man, don't bite. Don't jump out there and bite off more than you can chew out here with the big boys. Now, as far as Jerron Ennis, as far as Jerron Ennis goes, I don't really know what else Jerron Ennis is going to be able to do by fighting other people that are not Errol Spence Jr., Terrence Crawford, or in case your Danny's Ugas wins the Errol Spence Jr. fight, which is possible. Um, I don't know what he would have, what he, what, um, what it's really going to do for him beating up the rest of those guys in that division. Other than, you know, making his name grow, giving him more chances to have more knockouts, right? Have more people eyes on him. But, you know, at 28 fights, what's he got? Like 28, 29 fights, 27 or 28 knockouts. He's been in the ring a good amount. Now, obviously, he's not been in there against the top level, you know, a lot of the top level, uh, you know, um, fighters. But he is where, in my opinion, he is where Errol Spence Jr. was before Errol Spence Jr. fought Kell Brook. Right. Because right before he fought that, I mean, some of his best wins were guys like um, uh, Lin now, guy, what's his name? I want to say it's not Leonard Bundu. Oh, yeah, I think it is Leonard Bundu. He had beaten um, Chris Algieri. He had beaten guys like um, 
uh, Chris Van Heerden, guys like that, right? And Errol Smith Jr. was saying, hey, man, it's my time. It's my time. I want to get the fight. A lot of the champions at the same, that were there at the same time, you know, Sean Porter, Keith Thurman, were all basically saying the same thing that, you know, people are saying now about Jerron, which is, you know, yeah, when he gets a little bit further along, when he's, you know, not quite ready yet, all of that type of stuff. Uh, and it was, oh, and when Errol got up there, man, Errol did his thing, right? So there's definitely a chance that, you know, Jerron Ennis can do the same, can do the same thing. Now, granted, uh, Jerron Ennis has a tougher competition to fight than Errol Smith Jr. does, in my opinion, because Errol proved that he was better than the other guys, with the exception of Terrence Crawford. With the exception of Terrence Crawford, he has not proved that yet. But as far as the rest of the guys at 147 at the time, Errol Spence Jr. was coming up. Errol Pru has proven at this point that he's better than those guys. Got to do it. Has to do it again against your Danny Zugas. And your Danny Zugas is a for real fighter. Very, very good fighter. And a fight that I'm really looking forward to. Um, you know, but he did it. And so the same thing can be say, said. And it's very possible for Jerron Ennis. Except for Jerron Ennis has got a, you know, a little bit higher mountain to climb. When you're talking about fighting the guys like Terrence Crawford or fighting guys like, or fighting Errol Spence Jr. Where I, who I think are some of the best welterweights to be in that welterweight division in, a, in years and years and years and years, with the with the exception of Floyd Mayweather Jr. when he when he was at 147 pounds, you know I think Errol and Terence Crawford are probably the best 147 pounders you know since the since the 90s since you know the time of Tito Trinidad uh, and Oscar De La Hoya and those guys. So he's got I think jerron has got a little bit more of a hill to climb by beating those guys but he looks like a special fighter to me now i think where that warning should be the person that should listen to that warning the most clearly is probably virgil ortiz because virgil ortiz looked a little bit uh not i want to say he looked suspect but he had a little difficulties in there with um egas calvinakis where you know i don't think jerron indus is going to have much of a problem with with egas calvinakis at all um uh and, well, I guess Terrence, you could say that Terrence Crawford had a little difficulty with him, but really it was more of just like a, a just trying to figure his way in there, and he got he got hit by something. Some people say he got dropped. I think, technically speaking, he did get dropped because he got hit with a punch and in his hand touched the glove. So his glove touched the, uh, touched the mat. So I think that was a knockdown. But, you know, look, man, you know, Errol Spence Jr., I respect this dude a lot. And I re when he says that he's not ducking and dodging people, I really, really do believe that, man. And it's very, very refreshing to see that, that a guy in his position, is, that is in his position, is doing that. Because you're not getting that out of Canelo Alvarez, who's the big name in boxing. Unfortunately, and I don't think it's all on Gervonta Davis, but Gervonta Davis and the lightweights, we're not getting that. But as time goes on, we have been getting all of the big fights at 147 pounds. Be primarily because Errol Spence Jr. Uh, because Errol Spence Jr. is there and he's not really taking any type of tune-ups. Went straight after a car accident. Went straight from Sean Porter to straight to Danny Garcia. Went there and was going to go right to Manny Pacquiao. We gets his eye injured. He goes right to he goes right to your Danny's Ugas. And in his comments in the press conference, he says, "Look, man, I'm going to be going for undisputed next, which means, dude, he could be go he's trying to go right at Terrence Crawford. But it'll be interesting, man, if Jerron Ennis gets that shot, if Errol's still at 147 pounds after he gets undisputed, you know whether or not he'll fight Jerron Ennis and and Virgil Ortiz, because those guys, if he's able to do it, those guys would be really would be the next up." But they would be getting in there with a guy that literally beat all of the top fighters and is definitely looking prime. But anyway, it is what it is. You let me know what you think in the comment section. Leave your comment in the comment section. And with that, I'm out. Peace.